lift her head up. So what should pet owners do and what type of food should you be buying? Well, here to answer some of those questions is Dr. Lisa Moses, a veterinarian with the Angel Animal Medical Center in Boston, Massachusetts. Dr. Moses, good morning. Good so, to see you. And this is morning. Keiko, by the way, here, the cat of one of our employees here. Let me ask you, how, how concerned should pet owners be at this point about the scare? If their pets ate the recalled food, they should be concerned and they should be talking to their veterinarian about making sure that their animals are okay. How long would you expect before you might see symptoms that, that your animal has been infected? That's a hard question to answer. The original reports looked like pets were going to be showing signs within a day of eating the food. But now veterinarians across the country are saying that they're seeing cases that ate the food maybe even as long as a few weeks or longer ago. Right. Now, Keiko here obviously is a very healthy cat. What would you look for in your cat or dog? We're talking about uh, kidney failure in this case. We are. It's very definitely kidney failure. The signs look similar to other kinds of illnesses, but some very basic things, vomiting, loss of energy, changes in water drinking, changes in urination. If your animal ate the food and is showing any of those signs, you should definitely see a veterinarian. Yeah, and, and if you picked up on these things early, is this something that can be treated successfully? Yes, the good news is, is that it does look like cases that are treated right away can recover. I think one of the interesting things about the discovery of this is we're learning that so much of these foods under different brands are really the same thing. And of course, that's what really scared people. But I think that's specific to this particular kind of food, and people don't have to worry that that's true of all pet foods. And what about the notion of switching to a dry food? Is that, a, is that an easy recommendation that people might want to follow during this? It is an easy recommendation. Unless your veterinarian tells you that there's a specific reason that you need to feed canned food, most dogs and cats do just fine on dry food. What about, I, I've heard of these human-grade animal foods. I have a dog, and I, I feed him the dry food, but I've heard of the human-grade things. Uh, does that make sense? What is that all about? I don't know that we know that that's necessarily safer at this point. Since this is such an odd kind of scary thing, it's hard to generalize. And, and for a lot of people, there is nothing more precious in their lives than their pets. And we hear of some people now making their own food. That's true. And Lots you, of you people... But you recommend against that. Well, if you're going to do that, you really should consult a veterinary nutritionist because it's really hard to cook a homemade diet that's well-balanced but a nutritionist can help you make a recipe that's well balanced. And of course there have been so many stories in the news, Dr. Moses, about uh, foodborne illness affecting humans, and we haven't heard up until now uh, affecting pets. Are animals susceptible to the same things that we are, the E. coli and those sorts of things we've seen in some of our foods of late? Absolutely. Dogs and cats can get E. coli, salmonella, all of those infectious diseases that we get eating undercooked or raw meat. All right. Well, Dr. Moses, appreciate you coming on the advice. We thank Keiko here who's a little shy, burying, her, yeah. burying his head in my arms. Well, thanks again for being here. We do appreciate thank it. Thank you. 13 after the hour, once again, here's Campbell.